hi there welcome back to hibernate tutorial series so in my previous video i have shown you how to create a hibernate application uh, using xml based configuration all right and in this video tutorial i'm going to show you how to create a hibernate application using java based configuration so we basically define a database and mapping details in hibernate configurations all right let's have a look into what are the tools and technologies that we will be using so we'll use Hibernate 5 Plus and we use Eclipse as an ID to develop Hibernate application and we use Maven and uh, Java 1.8 and we will be using MySQL database. All right. So let's have a look into what are the development tools that we are going to implement. So first uh, we create a simple mind project and we add a project structure to it and then uh, we basically create we add all the Maven dependencies to perm.xml and we create a simple JP entity and then we create a Hibernate configuration class using you know Java based configuration and we create a Hibernate utility class which provides a session factory object and finally we create a main class and we run Hibernate application as a standalone and we'll see the demo. Alright so let's let's implement these steps. So the first step is we need to create a simple mind project. Alright Let's open Eclipse ID and let's create a simple mind project. So I am in Eclipse ID. So if you can notice here in my previous video, I have shown you how to create a Hibernate application using XML based configuration. So this is xml.config.xml file which contains a Hibernate uh, and mapping details. All right, let me show you. Okay, so let's create a mind project here. Go to the new then Marvin search for Marvin here my project next just type group ID as net.java guides artifact ID as hibernate java config example all right Alright, so once you are happy with the details, just hit finish button. So here we go. So you can notice here by default uh, Java 1.5 uh, is associated with uh, this newly created project. So let's go to the class path and let's change from 1.5 to 1.8. Let's also change the compiler version from 1.1 1.8. Perfect. Now our project set. I have, we have done the project setup. Let's have a look into the next step. So next step is we need to create a project directory structure. Let's create a package and name it as net.javagates.hibernate.model. All right, let's create a few more packages. Alright, let's create uh, one more package. Name it as a util. Alright, let's have a look into next step. Is so next step is we need to add uh, Marvin dependencies to Palm.xml. Let's open Palm.xml and uh, let's create a dependencies dependencies element. Now inside that, let's. Uh, Let's add two dependencies that is MySQL connector and uh, Hibernate uh, core dependency. So these other two dependencies are end up in order to create a Hibernate application, uh, you know, to connect MySQL database. So next step is we create a simple JP entity. So typically, basically, we are creating a student JP entity. All right. Uh, let me close these other projects so these projects i have created for my previous video tutorials all right so go to the uh, model package right click new and class which let's name it as a student all right so let's create an instance variables uh, private int id private string post name
private string last name private string email perfect now let's create a getter setter method so in order to access these private uh, fields here we go all right let's create parameters constructor and let's also create a uh, you know default constructor here we go perfect now we have created a student class with uh, instance variables getter setter methods and constructors let's make this uh, student class as a jp entity uh, let's use at entity annotation in order to make the java class as a uh, jp entity and we use at uh, table annotation in order to provide a table details over here so we provide a table name as a student and let's use at uh, id annotation in order to make this id as primary key and let's also use at uh, generated value annotation in order to provide a primary key generation strategy uh, in this case uh, we use identity all right and let's uh, let's give a column name to these instance variables also let's uh, you know map this columns name with the uh, these private these uh, properties all right so if you don't specify a uh, add column annotation then by default the name of the column is uh, the name of this uh, instance variable all right let's uh, give a proper uh, column names like uh, post and post underscore name last underscore name and uh, here uh, email all right so this is a pretty simple uh, jp student class so next step is we need to provide a hibernate configuration so uh, we'll be creating programmatically a java based configuration here so go to the util package right click new and create a class and name it as a hibernate util perfect now we define all the database and mapping uh, configuration in this uh, file all right so in my previous video i have shown you how to define a, you know a database and mapping configurations in xml in this case we are programmatically you know writing a java code in order to provide a hibernate configuration so notice here uh, we are specifying uh, you know uh, database details like uh, driver name jdbc warrior username password and hibernate dilate and here we are specifying hibernate properties perfect right and uh, we also you know mapping uh, the jp entities and here we are using uh, service registry in order to build a session factory object so we should uh, maintain a single session factory object and we should use it throughout the application so let's create a student dao class uh, so so basically dao is a data you know a data access object uh, design pattern uh, it says that we need to separate out all the uh, all the database related stuff into a separate file so that we can decouple business logic from the database uh, stuff all right so here i am just de I'm, i you know i am just creating all the database related stuff in a single file that is a student dao and here i am just creating a save student uh, method inside that i am just uh, you know uh, saving a student object into a database so here let's uh, I'm, I'm just declaring a transaction object and let i'm using a try with resource statement in order to create a session object over here so we basically start the transaction and within that transaction we perform our database operations right so in order to start the transaction we need to call begin transaction method on session object and once the transaction is uh, begin then we can save a student object like this and once student object is persisted then we can commit the transaction let us say if there are any exception occur in this try state try block then uh, we need to write a catch block and we need to you know a rollback to transaction right so let's implement that step as well so let's create a catch block here and let's add a condition like uh, if transaction object is not null then we can roll back it it's a pretty simple uh, you know 
steps who you need to follow in order to uh, you know in order to use a hibernate so let's roll back it perfect right oops we need to assign a transaction object like this all right so we are using try with resource statement in order to close a session object automatically so you uh, so if you know you, you probably know that before java 7 uh, the, we need to close the resource using final statement right final block but uh, after java 7 uh, java 7 provides a try with resource statement we can use to close the resource automatically so here just create an app class uh, with the main method and we basically test the cyber application standalone that is by using main method let's create a DAO class object and we call a uh, save student method of this DAO class uh, this uh, student DAO class right let's create a student object here and let's give post name as a remiss, last name as a further array and email as a remiss at the gmail.com perfect now uh, let's call this save student method and let's pass the student object and let's print a you know id so this is the auto incremented id and we are just printing over here all right all right guys uh, we have we have developed almost the hibernate application now let's uh, run it this application as a standalone so yes our application is uh, working perfectly we don't we don't get any exception over here so you can notice here these are the statements the table you know table is created automatically by hibernate and also record is inserted perfect right so this is how typically we uh, write a uh, java's configuration programmatically in a hibernate applications all right all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next video